Okay, hi, so welcome to this video where I'm going to be discussing the food tests, okay? So this topic, basically, all you need to know is that you have to remember the food tests. You don't need to understand exactly how these food tests work and why they give us the results they do. You just need to remember what they are and how to test for each type of food. All right, so let's crack straight on. And the first thing that you have to do in any of these food tests is actually prepare a food sample. Right, because we can't just take some food and just test it. Right, very occasionally you can, um, and we'll see a photo of that in a little bit. But normally we have to prepare a food sample. Right, and the way we do that is we firstly get some uh, food, get the food that we want to test. So we get a small amount of food, and we break it up using a pestle and mortar, one of these guys. Okay, this breaks things open and allows us to get the substances out of the food okay once we've done that and we've ground it up we transfer some of that into a beaker right i'm just going to draw a beaker you know what a beaker is just a beaker like this and we transfer the food or whatever it's going to be okay let's get rid of that and then what we do is we add some distilled water okay it's important that it's distilled water because if it's not distilled water uh, then there may be other things in there that are going to contaminate our sample Right? Then we stir the mixture um, just to dissolve that food. So eventually this food will all dot around in here and hopefully it will go kind of clear. Right? Then lastly what we're going to do is we're going to filter it. Right? We're going to filter that uh, so, so we transfer basically that into another beaker. Yep. But that beaker is going to have a filter funnel, blah blah blah, and you're going to have filter paper. Right? And then this is transferred Oops, sorry about that. Transferred into here. Okay, the reason for that is because we're going to still have solid food particles in here, which we don't want, right? They basically get in the way. We don't want solid food particles. We want a liquid solution, right? And so we pour that in, and then you'll end up with our food sample, which is this thing here. All right, and that is basically how we prepare the food sample. In all of our tests, we need to prepare a food sample, and so that's what we are going to do. So let's first take a look at how we test for what is known as a reducing sugar. Okay, the way we do that is by a test known as Benedict's test. Okay, now here I've given you already the results of Benedict's tests. Basically, you can see that if you add a food sample and you carry out the test, you're going to get some kind of result. In this case, it is a colored result and is, it can actually be a different color depending on the amount or the concentration of your sugar that you have. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to say that this tests for reducing sugars. All right, so how are we going to carry out this test? Well, the first thing we need to do is prepare the food sample first food sample and transfer to a test tube. Okay, normally when you're transferring to a test tube, it's gonna be around about five centimeter cubed of sample. Uh, that's the same as five milliliters, right? A centimeter cubed is a milliliter. Then what do we do next? Next, we set a water bath to 75 degrees Celsius. Okay, you set your water bath to 75 degrees Celsius. Okay, then what we do is we take a solution, and this is why the name of the test is Benedict's test. We take, um, or we add, sorry, would be a better word, add Benedict's solution to the tube. All right. Okay, that's into the test tube. Benedict's solution um, is just a reagent that you'll be given. You don't need to know what's in it, okay? And, but you transfer that to the test tube. By the way, this is before putting it into the bath, okay? So this is before putting it into the water bath, right? You've prepared the water bath first just so you can get it up to 75 degrees Celsius, but Benedict's solution is added before you put the tube in the water bath. Okay, then we add the test tube to the water bath for five minutes. Okay, and this is important, with the tube pointing away from the person. Okay, so you want the tube pointing away just in case there are any fumes that are gonna be given off 
um, as a result. It's just a way of working safely. Okay, then what's going to happen after those five minutes is you're going to get a color change. Okay, color change indicates presence of reducing sugar. Okay, so if you get a greeny yellow color change, then it means you have some reducing sugar in there. You can see that in the diagram here. Let me just enlarge it for you. Okay, um, orange is more and then red is quite a lot. Blue, well, that's the color of Benedict's solution. Okay, so the Benedict solution is blue anyway. And so there's no color change there. That means you've had no reducing sugar, right? You might, you might be wondering what a reducing sugar is. You don't actually need to know, but basically a reducing sugar is one normally which is quite a small sugar so something like glucose uh, would be a reducing sugar non-reducing sugars are normally bigger um, but you don't need to go into that much detail okay so that's it uh, for that test let's move on to the next one uh, which is our test for starch right this is a really simple test and you've got a nice diagram there of um, of it working because all you're doing is gonna you're gonna add iodine and observe to see if you get a color change now you should know that starch is a plant's way of storing um, glucose, okay? It's a large molecule. Just like we store our glucose as glycogen, plants use starch, okay? So things like potatoes, things like rice, pasta, bread, etc., they're all gonna have a high starch content and you would expect a positive result. Okay, so what you're gonna do here is you're going to add um, a food sample to a test tube, okay, and then add a few drops of iodine solution and observe okay so you add a few drops of iodine solution okay and the blue black solution um, is a positive result okay that means that you have starch present if you don't have starch present so no change if negative and that is still an orange brown solution because the iodine is orange brown. Okay, so if we have a look at the bottom picture, you can see a positive and a negative next to each other. So this one here is what is a test tube which obviously contains starch. They added iodine and it went blue black. Whereas this here is a negative uh, result. We've added iodine and it stayed the color of iodine. So there's no change in color. It's still orange brown. Okay, so that's what we get. And this here is an interesting picture. It shows that you can actually carry out this test on the food itself. Um, you probably won't be doing that in the lab just because it's better. It's better practice to use the test tubes. Okay, but you can see that it does actually work. Okay. And so moving on, we're going to have the next test, and this test is the Burette test. Okay, now the Burette test tests for proteins. Okay, so this is the test for proteins. Okay, the first thing you'll notice from the diagram on the left is that the test tubes actually look pretty small. Yeah, that's because they are. Uh, in the Burette test, you generally use smaller volumes than you have done before because that's all you need to use. Okay, so you prepare a food sample as always. Prepare a food sample and add two centimeter cubed. Okay, just pretend that centimeter cubed of sample to a test tube. Okay. All right. Now the reason it's called the burette test is because you have another solution just called burette solution. Okay. So burette solution is added. Okay, and that's also going to be about two centimeter cubed. And shaken gently okay in the tube right a positive result is when you have a color change from like basically pale blue to either pink or purple right you can see here that it gets darker and it goes towards purple right in some lights it might look slightly pink but a positive result equals color change to purple slash pink Right, and this diagram basically is demonstrating that the more protein you have in there, the more drastic your color change is gonna be, right? So as you've got uh, higher amounts of protein, you can see that the, the test tube solutions get darker and darker and darker. And that is basically it for the Burette test. So it's pretty simple. Now, lastly, we have the Sudan 3 test. Okay, now this test um, it's very obvious when you when you get a positive result. This test is the lipid test. 
Okay, so it tests for lipids. Lipids uh, is the scientific word for fats, right? Fats are solid lipids and oils are liquid lipids. Overall, they're called lipids, okay? So fats and oils are both lipids. All right, now what you do is prepare a food sample as we already know we're gonna do. Prepare a food sample, okay? And add some, right, I'm gonna say five centimeter cubed, right, just as normal to a test tube. Okay, importantly, when you prepare the food sample for the lipids, okay, you actually don't have to filter it, right? This test works even if you don't filter the solution, which is really good. If you do filter it, uh, then you may, be you may be removing, sorry, solid fats. That's important because uh, fats, in general, fats do not dissolve, right? So if you are filtering and getting rid of all your solids and the only fats you had in there were solids, you actually would would be ruining the test so it's good not to filter this okay so i'd say do not filter to be safe right oils will probably work anyway but with um thick oils and definitely solid fats they won't filter through and so you won't have them in your food sample all right then add a few drops of you guessed it sudan three solution Okay, it's actually a stain. Okay, and gently shake. Okay, and you gently shake the solution, and then you watch to see what happens. Okay, what this actually does, the Sudan 3 stains lipids. Okay, so any lipids in there will be colored red, and everything else won't be. And so a positive result, okay, and so if, I'll say if lipids are present, then there will be be a layer of bright red separated from the solution okay if lipids are not present then there will be a uniform red color throughout Okay, because the Sudan 3 is a is red in color, but if there are lipids present, then the Sudan 3 will actually stick to those lipids and, and the rest of it will not be stained red. Okay, so on the left-hand side here, you see that we actually have red all the way through. Okay, that means that there are no lipids present. Okay, no lipids in that one. Here, okay, you see we have a clear layer and we have the red layer. Okay, and that red layer is where your lipids are, right? Because lipids don't like water, so they don't like the distilled water we use to make our solution. They separate out, and so you have that layer of lipid that's been stained, all right? So that was quite a lot of information in a fairly short period of time, but I hope that's made sense. The, none of those tests are overly difficult, okay? It's preparing your food sample. You need to know how to do that. You need to know the details of each test and the names, but you do not need to know the specifics about why the tests work and about what's actually in the reagents. So you don't have to know what Sudan 3 is. You don't have to know what Burette is, etc., etc. okay? So just remember those and remember what they test for and you will be fine. So if there are any questions, please post them in the box below and I'll be sure to get back to you or send me a direct email. But as usual, please do like and subscribe because it really helps me out. And of course, you'll be notified when new videos become available, which is good. But until then, um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.